and we I will hand over to uh, to Joyce. Um, over to you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next topic that we have is hemoglobinopathies and the newborn screening. Why is it important to talk about this subject? It's antenatal screening we are talking about. But one thing we have to notice and bring in mind is that the newborn screening and antenatal screening are both twin screening in UK. So follow on from the antenatal screening followed by uh, newborn screening. And newborn screening is also done um, in the UK to identify babies affected by hemoglobinopathy conditions. My name is Joyce Edu Amankwa, specialist midwife for sickle cell and thalassemia or hemoglobinopathy specialist midwife based in St. George's Hospital. Can we move to the next slide, please? So the objectives for this one is that the pathophysiology of sickle cell and thalassemia conditions in relation to the newborn screening. A couple of them have been sort of mentioned briefly, but we will mention a bit more into deeper. Also, statistics of hemoglobinopathy conditions or hemoglobinopathies in UK will be mentioned or discussed. The purpose of newborn screening um, also will be looked at. The purpose of the newborn screening for sickle cell and thalassemia would also be uh, looked at and the best time to screen for thalassemia in babies. Next slide, please. So we, I believe everybody understands by now that the hemoglobinopathies are conditions of the red blood cell. I always say to uh, our clients, it's like when you have eye, there is a condition that can affect the eye. There is a condition that can affect the, the knee. So it's hemoglobinopathies are the conditions that affect the red blood cell. So there is alpha chain and beta chain. We will come back to this. And also the theta hemoglobin. Next slide, please. Um, so inside the red blood cell has these chains the alpha chain and the beta chain. Now, when this alteration or deformity in the alpha chain, alpha thalassemia occurs, beta thalassemia also occurs if there is a default in the beta chain. I want us to look carefully at this theta hemoglobin because that is very significant in terms of screening for baby, for you know, fetal screening or baby screening at the five days old. We will come back to it to the fetal hemoglobin here. Uh, my colleague before Paula has mentioned a lot about the um, hereditary persistency fetal hemoglobin. Um, we will just dwell on that in relation to the thalassemia screening. Can we move on to the next, please? So. Statistics between two, uh, 20, I mean, between 260 to 350 babies is said to be born with sickle cell condition in UK every year. Um, the thalassemia is a condition where the amount of hemoglobin that the body produces is reduced, and this impacts on its oxygen carry capacity. Another statistic shows that there are approximately 20 to 30 babies born with beta thalassemia major in UK. And I'll move on to the, the last one, which also says in the UK, around 20 to 30 couples annually are identified as being at high risk of having babies with alpha thalassemia major. Next slide, please. So the newborn screening, how is it done? When babies are born, the national recommendation and national policy is that every baby born in UK has to have a newborn screening 
at five days old. How does it done? It's done by midwives who perform or professionals who perform the, 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 the test, happen to stamp the blood on a particular identified uh, paper that goes to the lab for screening. This is just a, a brief introduction or sample onto that. There are guidelines, there are principles and procedures and guidelines that govern the screening. We are not going to dwell on that. We are going to draw the importance of hemoglobinopathy screening in relation to the newborn. Can you move on to the next slide, please? So the purpose of newborn screening, then the UK National Screening Committee recommends all babies must be offered screening on the newborn screening program at five days old. The purpose is to identify babies affected by nine conditions. And this includes sickle cell disease, cystal fibrosis, con, uh, con, congenital hypo, hypothyroidism, and six other inherited metabolic diseases. The purpose of the screening is to prevent infant mortality and morbidity by referring affected babies and facilitate timely transition into clinical care. Next slide, please. So the reason for the circle particularly is that if babies are identified on the newborn screening, they are referred earlier. There is a time, time frame for referring these babies for screen for, for care. Now, to, the reason is that they are to be offered treatment to prevent major or escalating of the, of the condition or to reduce the consequences of the, of the condition. So the, the, the treatment is offered early in order that the baby can be surviving, over, surviving the condition. So they offer, they offer vaccination, immunization, antibiotics because it's not just a sickle condition that can be consequent, have, have you know, mortality rates on the baby, babies. However, it is rather the associated condition. So we know that sickle cell, we haven't got deeper in terms of what the sickle is about. We are only doing on the screening, but we know that it, infection is very high in, in, in sickle cell. So babies who are affected by sickle cell disease have such treatment at 90 days old. That is three months of age, they should be offered treatment. They offer immunization, vaccinations, and, anti, and antibiotics. That is the main, the, the, the main reason that we have to identify them as early as possible. So the antenatal screening is also emphasized and helping us to identify the babies who may be coming out already known as sickle cell disease. There is also the um, antenatal screening for circle, I mean, sorry, the newborn screening for circle is also to offer the parents support. The parents who have got the, a baby who is affected by sickle cell disease, they need support, they need understanding, they need a pathway of looking after the baby. So that is another aim to offer them support, to help them understand their condition and be able to care for the baby at home and also to give them information about the Sickle Cell Society for further information that they may require. Next slide, please. So thalassemia and newborn screening. On the nine disease or nine conditions that are screened on the newborn, if you are very careful or you can examine properly, you will see that thalassemia screening is not part of it. The reason or why is that? If we can go back now, please, if we can go back to the second or third slice that has the alpha chain and beta chain, please. Good, thank you. So we know that I always say to patients, we are breathing, we are getting oxygen from the air. The baby's in the womb, a simple 
uh, help to help them to understand. They are not getting that oxygen. Nature has its own way. There is more fetal hemoglobin that is developed to maintain them and to help their growth. So they have more excess of the fetal hemoglobin. So if we know that in the reading, somehow we came across that thalassemia is the reduction of the red blood cell. And, but however, however, babies will be born with high fetal hemoglobin already in their system. I believe it will be very difficult for the lab to, con to identify if this baby is a carrier or not a carrier because already they have high fetal hemoglobin and the condition to be identified is that it's a reduction in the fetal, a, a reduction in hemoglobin. So we can go back again to the, uh, the, the number that we were on before. So very, very important that we know that thalassemia affecting the quantity of the red blood cell. But then you have a baby whose, ha whose hemoglobin is as higher as anyone or, or anything. So how do they identify if they are going to be identified on the newborn screening? I believe this is a simple explanation I can say on this, that it's very difficult for them to identify. However, if a baby has been is affected by the major disease, particularly the beta major, that can be identified. We can go on to the, the, the last slide that we left, please. Okay, that, that, the one above, please. The one before this one. The one before this one. That's it, thank you. So some of the reason is what I have explained. However, there could be more, there will be more reasons why babies cannot be screened for thalassemia by the nine conditions when they are screened at five days old. So babies affected by beta thalassemia major can be, can be identified. Alpha thalassemia major is not compatible to life and has mortality and mobility to the pregnant mother if undiagnosed, and also for the baby. So, so it is to identify pregnant women or babies who are going to be affected by the thalassemia major. So antenatal screening, antenatal diagnosis is very important for thalassemia screening. The only time that is best, particularly for the carriers of the beta thalassemia, is one year old. When the baby is one year old, that is when you are getting the, hemophilia, the fetal hemoglobin has then dropped to 1% or less than 1%. And that is the best timing to screen uh, beta thalassemia carriers. Um, for, the, for the alpha thalassemia major, very difficult. It has preeclampsia risk to the mother. There are so much, so much around it. It's the one that I fear most the alpha thalassemia. So if it is not diagnosed in pregnancy, we miss a lot and we miss also identify, not only to identify the baby who is affected, but also the mother whose health are going to be compromised during the pregnancy. Now emphasis for this part of the, of the, of, of the topic is that we become more aware of women who are thalassemia carriers, pick them up from the pregnancy, address them as we go along, rather than leaving them to the newborn screening, which may not pick them up. And also the consequences of health, poor health, that may happen to both mother and the baby. Um, the best time of identifying, as I mentioned, is during the antenatal period. Thank you. Can we go up and uh, down again to the next slide? So how does alpha thalassemia is identified? My colleague before me, Paula, mentioned a lot about the um, alpha thalassemia, I mean, uh, about the theta, um, about the hemoglobin. That's, let me just mention it there. So alpha thalassemia diagnosis in pregnancy, you will get, as Paula mentioned, a possible alpha carrier. And maybe low risk, as you mentioned before. However, those that are from high risk area need further testing. They need DNA testing to confirm the correct genotype. 
they need DNA tests, and the DNA testing can take anything up to two weeks to four weeks to get the results. So it is important to have early screening to identify these women or this couple who may be at a risk of having a baby affected by thalassemia, particularly the alpha thalassemia. So then you can do a DNA testing, getting the results. Are these parents both uh, alpha zero carriers? And if they are alpha zero carriers, then they will, what is the next step in this discussion? It takes a time to get to the bottom to know if this baby is going to be affected. The parents, you know, the diagnosis that will come in from the PND, uh, uh, prenatal diagnosis testing, or the decisions they will make about the pregnancy, it takes time. So early referral is the key for helping these parents to make decisions about their pregnancy. We are talking about newborn screening in relation to antenatal screening, and the reason why newborn screening is not, uh, thalassemia is not included on the newborn screening at five days old. It's uh, very important for us as midwives or professionals to know this and identify and take serious action if we know that these couple are from high risk area. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are we taking home? To so take home message. Um, taking home message, there's a lot of them here. I believe you may have got something out of this, but what would you take to influence your practice today? The purpose of the newborn screening is for early identification of affected babies or at-risk babies. Early treatment of the affected babies to prevent disability and even death in the sickle. Now, sickle cell disease is one of the nine conditions on the newborn screening program. Babies affected by sickle cell disease are offered treatment from three months of age. Both alpha and beta thalassemia are not offered on the newborn screening program. The alpha thalassemia major, which is the BAT syndrome, is not compatible to life. The best time to identify babies at risk of thalassemia is during the antenatal screening. Now, midwives have responsibility to, or responsibilities to ensure every baby has newborn screening at five days old. And family original questionnaire, family original questionnaire, very, very important to the screening in every angle, either newborn or, or, or antenatal timing. Now, midwives should be, should be routinely checked for hemoglobinopathies, status of every patient that we come across. It doesn't matter if antenatal, booking, um, postnatal ward, labor ward, we have the role to identify both mother and babies who may be at risk of this condition. Next slide, please. Thank you. And the next slide, please. Any references that is available there? Any questions for me? Thank you very much.